the other way to think about this test is to think about it in terms of chapters and what we've studied. So chapter one, uh, I'm really not focusing too much on chapter one in the test except on uh, you know, just some true false questions. Uh, what do we talk about in chapter one? We talked a lot about laws, uh, we, of functions, of, of things. But first we talked about functions just in general. So we talked about, first, types of functions. So can you classify functions? So here's good examples. What kind of functions are these? You can just tell your neighbor as you. As I write these down, or you can make little notes. What are these four functions that we worked on or looked at? This is an example of a polynomial. This is an example of a, well, it's a ratio of polynomials. So this is a rational, ratio, no, function. This is a trig function. This is an exponential function. You know, being able to classify all these things, it does, it does help us because later on when we talk about continuity, we know a lot of these things are continuous on their domains. So functions part B is domains of functions. So just considering this example along. This function, x squared plus 1, uh, that, that has all real as its domain. You can square any real number you want, and then of course you can add 1 to any real number that you want, and you can tell me exactly what the value is. G of x introduces the possibility that we might divide by something that we can't. So with rational functions, you need to worry about division by zero. What did I write? Minus one? So you have to take out one from this one. Take any all the real numbers, you can plug those guys in, but you can't plug in one because there you have division by one. So all the real is minus step one. h of x, specifically sine of x, that's just the y-coordinate of the point on the circle corresponding to the terminal side of the angle, x. So if I can draw the angle, then it has a y-coordinate. So, sine has the domain all reals. What about cosine? What's its domain? We'll just do this one out loud. If I plot an angle on a circle, any old angle, can you tell me the cosine of it? Yeah, because it's just the x-coordinate, right? Every point on the in circle has an x-coordinate, so we're not worried about that. What about tangent? Give me an angle that you can't tell me the tangent of. You don't know. No, but I just know. Okay, 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 let's think about it. Tangent is a ratio of the y-coordinate to the x-coordinate. That is, the sine divided by the cosine. So give me an angle where you can't tell me the tangent means give me an angle where a cosine is zero. Right? Because we can't divide by zero. So give me an angle where cosine is zero. So we think about the unit circle. We think about x-coordinates because that's cosine. Here is the point, 0, 0, that's the center of the circle. So any points directly above it or below it have cosine equaling 0. Now can you? What's that? You can give it in degrees or radians, I don't care. 90? Perfect. Yep. 
How about this one? You can get it two ways. Somebody else. You can go this way. You can go this way. I don't care. What is that angle? Negative 90. Negative 90. Perfect. Okay. In radians, that would be pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Yep. Well, we've talked about this. There's an infinite list of angles that you could give me. Because you could first go up to here and then go an entire way around the circle again. And that gets you to 360 plus 90. Okay. So what would you write for that as a domain? Like, as a what? What would you write for the domain of tangent? For domain of tangent? Yeah. Oh, gracious. You could write it you know, just in words. Um, I'll erase this. So it has domain equal to, so you write the set bracket, and like the set of you're trying to describe, and then just write words that describe angles you can plug in. So domain equals all real numbers except, and then you could say like 90 degrees. You think about the other one was negative 90 degrees, but how could you get there? You could just subtract 180 from it. 90 minus 180. So one way is just to like list them out. And you'll see a bunch of patterns emerging. Right? That's 90 plus going around again. The other one is negative 90 minus 360. That means going around in the same direction again. And you might even realize the relationship as you're writing these things down that these are exactly 180 degrees apart and it's just 90 degrees minus 180. So where can't you put it? You know, you can write words. Any real number except 90 plus 180 and where n is any integer. So you either add 180, which gets you down to the bottom, you add two 180s, which is 360, which gets you back up to the top, three of them gets you down to the bottom, four of them go to the top. So just in words is fine. Yep. Uh, if the symbols are confusing, automatically default to words. Okay? That goes for anyone. On the short answer, um, if the symbols elude you or if you blank, just write down in words what you're trying to communicate with the symbols that you can't remember. Okay? Okay. Um, exponentials, what's their domain? Do you remember this one off the top of your head? No? Maybe? Yes? Maybe. Anything. True. Anything. You can plug in anything you want to an exponential. Up top, right, you're going to get a positive or a negative number. If it's a positive number, then that's easy. An exponential to a positive is fine. But if it's negative, that might make you think, oh, I can't take a negative power. But uh, you, can't, you can't say that because you can. You just have to remember that for an exponential, any exponential, you have this rule, which says you can make that power positive just by taking the reciprocal of it. It's one of those rules. So we plug in whatever we want up here, and if we get a positive number, we just evaluate. If we get a negative number, we take the reciprocal, and then we evaluate. So any real number. Okay, questions about types of functions and domains of functions? Okay, we talked a little bit about one-to-one -one functions and functions which have inverses.
So there was this really nice test. Actually, there's a really nice test to determine if something's a function. Uh, maybe the fact that I forgot it means something. But there's a really nice test for one-to-one -one functions. To determine if a function is one-to-one, -one, or if, really to test if it has a functional inverse, what's the test you use? A horizontal line test. So if I give you any graph, and I ask you, hey, is this a function? You might try some test, which I haven't mentioned yet. If I ask, does it have a functional inverse, or is its inverse a function, is another way of asking it, you apply this horizontal line test to it. If any horizontal line crosses that graph in more than one place, it does not have an inverse, which is a function. It has an inverse, but it's not a function. Who remembers why it's not a function? It's certainly, certainly everything has some undoing, right? We can, if we can square a number, we can certainly undo the squaring of a number. But what makes the inverse to this, or that, or this, not a function? It's the same thing twice. Yeah, exactly. You plug in this height, and the output is not one thing. A function needs it to be just one thing. Okay, very good. So we talked about one-to-one -one and invertible, that, that means roughly the same thing, functions. And we talked about a lot of examples of them. I don't know, I'm making stuff up. 2x plus 5. That's a function. What kind of function is it? Say it loudly. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Linear. Linear, yes, yes, yes. Does it have a, an inverse, which is a function? Yeah, yeah. It's got a slope of 2, so it comes up like this. No horizontal line is going to hit it twice. So it has an inverse function. All right? Does it have an inverse? Yes, it has an inverse. Does it have a, an inverse which is a function? No. Unless what? We restrict it. Yeah, yeah. So that was a big thing. Like if you, if you say, hey, our angles are only between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, does it have an inverse which is a function? Yep. It does. Without that restriction, no, it doesn't. So we, got, we had ways of getting around these things. Um, tangent was restricted. Um, we had cosine was restricted. All sorts of things. And we came up with ways of finding inverses. So I, let's see. So D. Finding inverses. There was a basic algorithm for finding inverses, which went something like this. First, you swap x's and y's. Right. Second, you use a bunch of algebra to solve for y. And you've had I remember it in the homework, lots of examples of that. Okay. So what are some of these inverses? So we had logs and exponentials. We had trig functions and the inverse trig functions. We had polynomials or powers 
and we have roots. So I'll give you just real quick three examples of these kinds of things. So if I gave you some random exponential, say e to the 5 or 2, whichever I end up writing, x, what's its inverse? Well, we remember that this base is what determines the log base in the inverse. There we go. I will do this off the board, I guess. We say y equals the original function. Step one, swap x's and y's. Step two, which is pretty much all of it. Solve for y. If I wrote down the log base e of e to the 2y, by definition of the log, which is definitely something we should be familiar with, whatever I write on the right hand side needs to be the power of e, the base which equals whatever is inside here. Okay? That's just by definition what it is. So what is that power? 2 one. So, when we have an equality here, x equals e to the 2y, if I slap a log base e on both sides, that's allowed, by the way. This is one of the steps, the algebra steps you can take. On the right-hand side, you get this. Right? Log of that matches 2y. On the left-hand side, what do we have? We have the log base e of just x. Last step, divide by 2. If you use natural log, is it the same thing? Yes, yep. I'm just being explicit here with the exact base. Yes. So now divide by 2, and we've got our inverse in the end. e to the 2x has an inverse log base e of x times 1 half. So this is our inverse. This is our original function. You think about this, you know, what do we do? You plug in a number first, you multiply by two. Second, you exponentiate. Here we're doing everything in the exact opposite order with the exact opposite operations. First, we multiply by two, so our last step is going to be dividing by two. The next thing we did here was exponentiation, so that means the first thing we do here is logarithmiation. That's not a word. Logarithmic positive. I don't know. Take the law. Okay? And like I've said, there's a very distinct relationship between these two numbers here, whatever they are. Trig versus inverse trig. Uh, I kind of I put this here because I wanted to, again, iterate that. If there's no restriction for a trig function, it doesn't have a functional inverse. Okay? But if you do have a restriction, then there are, in fact, these inverse functions. So for sine, there is an arc sine. Or you also can write this sine inverse of x. Okay? But these need restrictions. which has big implications for their evaluation. I'm, I'm going to rewrite that in just a second. I want to write something in here real quick. 
sine of pi, or sine of 180 degrees. Maybe we know what that is, maybe we don't. But when you plug that in to sine inverse, you're going to get something out, right? And this key thing with functions and their inverses is that whatever you plug in, you do something with, and then you undo that thing. So you should get back the original, unless there were restrictions. So the nice functions, if you see a function composed with its inverse, boom, you just get i back out. Unless you're not working with a one-to-one -one function. When you're working with one-to-one -one functions, you need to recast it back into this. So this problem, we need to think about, because pi is not in here, we need to think about where our inverse takes it back to. So this is just a methodical type of thing. Sine of pi is what? On the unit circle, pi is 180 degrees, so it's right here. What's the y coordinate of that point? Zero. So that's just the methodical part of it. First, compute the internal part. And next, ask yourself what angle in here has the same sine value? Very good, I'm hearing nothing. Zero. Spot on. Uncanny how you knew that. Okay, and we have power and roots that I erased. So a good example for this might be something like 5x to the fifth plus 1. We'll say that's our original function. So we're going to see this is x to some whole number of value. We're going to see that we're going to end up taking a root to take the inverse eventually. So I'll just walk through this one. Swap x and y. Try and isolate the y. Divide by 5. There's this nice little rule that says if you have something to a power and you raise it to another power, then you just multiply the powers together. 5 times 1 fifth is exactly 1. That's what we're going to do here to get rid of that fifth power. We're going to raise both sides to the 1 fifth power, which is really taking the fifth root. So this means the inverse is the fifth root of x minus 1 over 5. Here I chose an odd power because we don't need to worry about negatives underneath our radical with odds. Um, if it was an even power, then it would be a difficult problem, a little more difficult, something else to think about with pluses and minuses. But there we have our function and its inverse. If you look at the computation of the inverse, it kind of makes sense. What's the first thing we do here? We plug a number in and we raise it to the fifth. So the last thing we do over there is going to be take the fifth root. The second thing we did here was multiply by 5. So the second to last thing over there we're going to do is divide by 5. The last thing we did here is add 1 to this. So the first thing we do to our inputs there is subtract 1. First, subtract, then divide, then take the root. First, take the power, then multiply, then add. We're doing the exact opposite things in the exact opposite order for the inverse. 
Okay, questions about anything so far? I'm going to stop the recording because we're done talking about functions.